Saturday, uh, instead of the CG333, which is the normal place, it will be in Peterson Gym. Uh, it's 242, I read it off the blackboard. Uh, we have a second room for overflow students if we need it. Uh, but just jump to 242 and we'll tell you to go to the other room if it's full. Uh, review session. Uh, we'll just go to that big lecture hall we were in last review session. Uh, PS five to seven. What's up? PS 130. Oh, PS 130. Yeah. Uh, so, just a reminder of that. For the exam, the exam will go through acid house. What? Acetals. Acetals and ketals. So that's midway through chapter 16. Uh, we should get there today, the very beginning, but it's definitely something we'll get all the way through on Friday. And acetals are something we've actually been dealing with the entire semester, so it's stuff you're actually familiar with, believe it or not. Uh, so it will go through acetals. Yeah. I changed it already. Uh, if, if, if it's not changed, double check, but I pushed the button to change it, so it should be changed accordingly. So, none, nonetheless, we have some stuff to go through. So, uh, at the end of lecture on Monday, I introduced the dibol. So, one thing you pretty much dealt with two things uh, dibol and another aluminum high bed reagent that stops once. So, you know, with LAH, at esters, LAH will go all the way to the primary alcohol. Uh, I introduced two of the agents, and the important one, the one you guys should care about, is Dibol, which is an aluminum with two isophilo groups, leucines, for those who know their amino acids, and uh, uh, hydride. And so Dibol is the important hydride reagent to know that stops once. Dibol, Dibol, Dibol. And so Dibol, the mechanism is simple. So unlike lithium aluminum hydride, which is a hydride as is and doesn't need any priming or activation, Dibol is a tri-substituted neutral aluminum complex in its native form. And so what that means is Dibol, it's a Lewis acid, but it's not particularly a great hydride reagent as is. So Dibol needs to be primed. And the way Dibol is primed, as we talked about on Monday, is the lone pair of electrons on the carbonyl act as a Lewis base and form a coordination complex with the aluminum. So lone pair of electrons from the oxygen goes into the aluminum, now to give us a net minus charge on our aluminum. And so this activates Dibol, it being just the Lewis acid, without being an aluminate complex with a net minus charge, and the minus charge is going to lie on the substituents on it, particularly the hydride. And so now, once the carbonyl forms a complex with Dibol, now Dibol's reactivity is going to be more in line with what we expect from an aluminum hydride reagent. But mechanistically, you need to form this complex first. Dibol is not going to be that reactive until you form the complex. So that's a key mechanistic step. That's the kind where if you don't do that, you get zero credit for a dibol question. So from there, once we form our aluminate complex, then the hydrogen will do an intramolecular addition uh, into the carbonyl carbon along the pi star orbital uh, to give us our uh, intermediate here. And so this is where it, this is where the mechanism really bifurcates from LAH and other things we've talked about. So normally with hydride reagents, what happens is we form this intermediate, which is an acetal. So like I said, we've been dealing with acetals all semester, so I'm not too uh, sad about you know, including acetals in the exam, even if we don't get to them until Friday, because we've been dealing with them all semester and the activity doesn't change. So we get this acetal intermediate where we have an aluminum ether. So typically, uh, with things like LAH, uh, or some of the other hybrid reagents we talked about, uh, this will collapse. This will collapse uh, in the reaction conditions, giving us the aldehyde. And then the aldehyde is more reactive in the ester because of electronics. And so the aldehyde will go to the primary alcohol. And that's why things like LAH give us the uh, primary alcohol. Well, in this case, since this is a neutral aluminum complex, so with LAH, 
we'd have another hydrogen here. And so, well, another hydride, which can add. So that's not stable in that own right. Uh, but in this case, this is a neutral aluminum ether. It's perfectly stable. There's, uh, this is the same stability as ether, if you want. So this is an acetal at minus 78 degrees during these, in these reaction conditions of dibol. This is perfectly stable. It's perfectly happy. So it just sits. And it just sits. And since it doesn't collapse, collapse the aldehyde, we can't, another equivalent of dibol can't reduce it because the aldehyde doesn't form. So the reason, the reason dibol steps once and gives you the aldehyde is because under the reaction conditions cold, the dibol doesn't form in situ. The aldehyde doesn't form in situ. So in order to get the aldehyde, you actually have to warm it up and add something to quench the reaction. And so the thing we add to quench the reaction is we warm it up and we add water. And I complete, my arrow completely missed. The arrow from the water should be attacking the aluminum. So the water is going to attack the aluminum. And that's going to give us an intermediate like this, which I think I'm getting some cases at. But pretty much this is the alcohol. This is the same acetal, although it's water having added here. So it's an H2O plus and aluminum to two isobutyl groups. And then this is what we care about. This is the aldehyde. And so since we warmed it up and we had water added into the aluminum, and there's a minus charge here, the electrons from this oxygen aluminum bond can now go and kick down into this bond, kicking off our ester substituent, or OET, or O-ethyl in this case, ethanol, giving us our aldehyde, our ethanol, and then our aluminum uh, alcohol as the byproducts. But the key is, the dibol is, the intermediate, this acetal intermediate is stable with dibol. And so it doesn't collapse until we quench it. And by the time you quench it with water, the water is going to remove all of the excess uh, dibol around. And so then there's, so once we actually do form the aldehyde at the end of the reaction, there's no hydride reagent to add into it. So we form just a stable, uh, we form a stable intermediate that doesn't form the aldehyde in situ. Aldehyde forms once we quench it through this craziness, and then we get our aldehyde. And aldehyde stable because there's no hydride reagent, and that's what happens. So, yes? Can you explain the order that you have the arrow protein? This is uh, what you need here? Yeah, so. Um, oh, so, first off, water adds. That gives us a, there's an H2O plus here. Don't worry about the H2O plus. That, the, the second hydrogen should be picked up by the water we add. So, really, uh, that's, at this point, that should be pretty second nature, but I drew because people get confused if I don't. So, we have this hydrogen. All right, but don't worry about that yet. This is a concerted reaction. The key thing is we have this aluminum with a minus charge. All right, so the electrons in this oxygen aluminum bond can now just go kick here. So what happens first is since we now have this aluminum, this electron rich aluminum oxygen bond, we can have these electrons kick down here, one, kicking out OET minus two, and then the OET minus you can draw if you want to kick off this proton from the H2O plus. Again, what do I say about arrow pushing? There's a million ways to do it, okay? If you do it right without breaking any rules of chemistry, I don't care the order as long as it's reasonable. So don't, again, the worst thing you can do for this class is get in memorization mode. If you get in memorization mode, you're probably gonna get a 40% on this test. That's just how organic chemistry is. Uh, but so just once again, Water attacks to go from neutral aluminum to, a, to a, aluminum with now a minus charge. That means that this aluminum oxygen bond is now more electron rich. That pretty much means that the aluminum could just fall off. So imagine as the aluminum falling off, giving us an O minus here that can quickly. So there's a lot more O minus charge once the water attacks. So now this oxygen can kick off the ethyl group. So let's. Let's look at it one more way, because I think you guys are looking at this and... <laughs> All right, so let's look at it. One more. I'm going to draw the key intermediate here. And don't say I don't care, because I probably don't have time to go over this, but I want people to understand this part. Because uh, this is one of those steps I see people fixating on and really screwing up the mechanism on that rather than understanding the key part. And the key part is just that this is stable. This is stable and we don't form the aldehyde in situ. That's the take home message from Dibol.
So that's your proton transfer. So this is this intermediate. I decided on H2O plus, I just do HO. Because we're in aqueous conditions, and this proton on the H2O plus is being picked up by another thing of water. So this isn't going to last long. So this is pretty much the same thing, and I hope you guys see that. That if you form an H2O plus intermediate in aqueous conditions, that H2O plus is not going to stay very long. So this is pretty much what we formed. Same thing as this, just after a proton transfer. So I'm just going to draw H2O, picking up this proton just to make it neutral. So are you guys okay with this? You guys should be okay with this. All right. And so then, think of it this way. And again, either way I draw it is perfectly fine. You know, with chemistry, there's five or six ways to do electron pushing. That can be valid. As long as it's valid, I don't care. As long as you've thought about it, it's reasonable, and it doesn't break any laws of physics. So we form this, and then there's a minus charge here. Let's have these electrons just go through the oxygen. What you can, this is perfectly reasonable, this is just the aluminum minus charge falling off, giving up, giving the oxygen its electrons back. All right. So the, the oxygen aluminum bond, the aluminum falls out, giving the two electrons in the bond back to the oxygen. And now, does this look like an intermediate you guys recognize? This is an intermediate you should recognize. This is an intermediate you've shown several times in this class. So this is just, this is just the same intermediate as hydrogen add, as LAH adding into it, which is have an O minus. And there's probably some counter iron around. Uh, but just imagine we form this, and then I think you guys can agree that then this intermediate can quickly fall down, collapse to give us the aldehyde plus ethanol. Okay? Is, it, is that better? Yes. So where are you starting from when you add the H2O on the other? Board? So we're starting here when we add the H2O. The H2O adds at this position to give us an aluminum with an H2O plus two, I, two isobutyl groups, and then the, uh, the alde, what's going to be the aldehyde portion, and then you know proton uh, water picks up a proton from that uh, to give us this intermediate. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the one on the right is just with the water. The one. I'm not. They're both with water. I'm just drawing in two different good. ways because this considered way seemed to bug a lot of people, although it's fine. So I, drew, I decided to draw it another way on the fly that was more in line with what you guys have seen before. Okay. That's, uh, does that make sense? Yeah. They're both the same. I'm just trying to have you guys look at it two, two different directions just so you guys get it. So th these are both the same. One is a stepwise, one is a concerted mechanism. Uh, I don't know which one happens, but both are reasonable. Both are pretty much the same thing in my book. Yes? Can you repeat what you said about Lucy? What's up? Oh, no. Uh, the side shine in leucine is a nice field. So I was just testing people on their biochemistry amino acid knowledge. That's how I remember Dybal, to be perfectly honest. I say, oh, side shine in leucine. Or isoleucine. One of those two. Something with leucine. <coughs> All right, so the key thing, though, is that the intermediate of Dybal adding is stable. And this is stable until we add water and water adds, aluminum falls off, gives us this intermediate that we've seen before, collapse the aldehyde. But in contrast to LAH, where it forms in situ, and then an LAH can go and reduce it again, in this case, it doesn't form until we add water and warm it up, which removes any of the, of the leftover dye ball. So by the time you form the aldehyde, there's nothing that's going to reduce it. Just to give you one more example, of the advantage of dye ball. So, we just in a different color. So I don't think I've gone over this, but if you take a nitrile, an excess LAH, <coughs> what 
what is it the product will get out of it? With dibol, with sorry, with LAH and the nitrile. Do you think LAH will add new nitrile? Yes. A nitrile's reactivity isn't that different than a carbonyl. A carbonyl's a pi system with a carbon and an oxygen and a nitrile is a pi system between a carbonyl and a nitrogen. So nitriles, so carbons, triple bond, and nitrogen are going to have a lot of similar reactivity as carbonyls do. Of course, it's sp versus sp3, so some things will change. But in a lot of ways, you can treat uh, nitriles very similarly to ketones. So if you have LAH, in fact, I would say you think of them as an ester. Think of them as an ester. So if you had LAH, lithium aluminum hydride, near the carbonyl, and let me actually draw the aluminum hydride. The hydride is going to add into the pi system. One of the pi systems, right? There's two orthogonal pi systems in the nitrile. with an ester, next thing we're going to do is now from the aluminum complex, and then just as, all right, and then what do you think this is going to do? Rhymes with intramolecular hydride transfer. <laughs> So again, with LAH, a nitrile is very, 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 very similar to an ester. LAH is going to go twice. Uh, and instead of going to a, car, a uh, primary alcohol, it's going to give you a primary amine. So what will 
will die ball go once or twice into an eye drop? It'll go once, right? So the first step, of course, will be that molten electrons and the nitrogen has to add to the aluminum. charge on aluminum, a positive charge on our nitrogen, and then we do our intermolecular hydride transfer. So if you think dibol and water, the product you get out will be this carbon nitrogen double bond. And this will lead us into something we'll talk about shortly, but I'm just going to draw this out now. If you take this carbon nitrogen double bond and throw an acid in water, what do you think we're going to get out? This is really hardcore acetal chemistry, and I'll get into it in about five minutes. I just want to uh, see if you guys can guess what an imine plus water and a carbonyl will get, plus water and acid. The answer is a carbonyl. Another carbonyl, yeah, a carbonyl. So when you take, and I'm going to show this mechanism in a second, but I'm, I'm actually going to show a similar reaction to this. Uh, first, I just want to uh, let you guys know, uh, and then I'll show you the mechanism in the context of the next reaction. So anyway, uh, you take an imine and you throw in a carbon nitrogen double bond, and you throw in H2O and acid, you'll be to get your carbonyl out. Um, I'll, I'll show you this mechanism in a second, but I'm, I'm going to show a very similar reaction. I didn't want to show you the mechanism in that case. LAH is just going to add, sorry, dibol will just add once, where LAH will add twice. Uh, but the take home message from the fact that we had a carbonyl is that 